I haven't focused on all the bad things that happened in the past year. Um, I want you to see what a cool place this is now. It's really friendly, really nice. I've enjoyed it here. Yeah, well, here was the first chapter of the movie, The Origins of Medellin. Well, oh, guys, as many other Latin American cities, Medellin, of course, has its origins in the indigenous communities. Within this valley, for a very long time, in about 500 years ago, we used to have an indigenous community called the Aburraes or Los Aburra. That's why this valley to this day is still called the Aburra Valley as a tribute to them. Now, 500 years ago, when the Spanish conquistadors came to America, what were they looking for? The Spaniards. Cool. Exactly, they were looking for gold. And you know how much gold they found in this particular valley? Guys, they found zero gold. They found no gold at all. So, from the perspective of the Spaniards, the indigenous people of Medellin, the Aburraes, they were actually poor. So they left them alone a couple of days later. Now, about 70 something years later, those same Spaniards, after going around the state and digging for a lot of gold, they started wondering, hey, do you remember that valley? That was not too hot, that was not too cold either. That would be a cool place to hang out, right? And guys, look, they did. This is what we call the official origin of Medellin. The official date is really simple, 1616 twice 16. That's what the gene was officially born, right? Like guys, the thing is that well, after 1616, for the next 300 years, absolutely nothing interesting happened in this valley. Look guys, I'm not kidding. The indigenous people of Medellin and the Spaniards, they started mixing up, they built a couple of churches, a couple of squares, and that's pretty much it. For the next 300 years, Medellin, in a way, was just like a, like a tiny little village. That's why, unlike, for example, Bogota or Cartagena, Medellin doesn't have a historic center. Have you guys been to either Bogota or Cartagena by any chance? Well, both of these cities, beautiful historic centers. Medellin doesn't have one. And that's also why, within this valley, we had no battles against the Spanish kingdom when we tried to get free from them, right? Like, guys, the thing is that everything changed for this region right away here in the transition between the 19th and the 20th century. Why? Because, guys, in this transition, human beings, we started drinking a substance that makes us feel more energetic. We drink it in the morning. It begins with C. We started drinking coffee, exactly. Guys, the thing is that, well, in this region, because of our weather conditions, we actually have the perfect weather to grow coffee. We can actually grow up to four crops of coffee a year. So that's what we started doing. We started growing and selling coffee. Now guys, the thing is that well, with the first profits of coffee, we actually built something that changed everything for this region. We built, well, a railroad. Now guys, after we built a railroad, it was extremely, extremely important for us because besides breaking the isolation we used to be in, by the way, how many of you came to Medellin by bus? Do that skip. As usual, not a lot. Right, actually guys, you're perfect my example. Can you explain to the lucky ones how was the road to come here? Was it like a straight German high wall of the Autobahn? Or was it a lovely winding and bumpy roll like a roller coaster? Yeah. Like a roller coaster, right? Yeah. But it was beautiful, no? It was beautiful, no? Yeah. Yeah, no it's not. Right.
This is it. Medi in Muay Thai. Oh, this is David, the owner of Mu Muay Thai Medi in. Uh, I'll hand it over to him. Okay, so hello everybody. This is David from Colombia. Uh, this is the gym Muay Thai Medellin. We are, um, we have 50 beds available for everybody that wants to come to train here in Colombia. Uh, feel welcome to look for us in Instagram or our social media, Muay Thai Medellin Oficial in Spanish. So it is one with one F. And yeah, we are in the middle of, Los, of the Andes and uh, in a tropical weather, 2,000 meters above sea level uh, in the middle of a natural reservation area. So we wait for you guys. Okay, peace out. So this is a gym, cool environment, lovely place. <laughs> I'll show you what it's like outside now. This is the views when you call if you come and train here. He's, he's a great guy, great to work with, really technical. Um, I think he's chairman of the uh, Muay Thai Federation for over here as well. So, and he's got a lot of fights. He used to train with Chris Cyborg. So, you know, uh, if you're thinking of a different destination to come and train Muay Thai, have a look here. Ring outside here, and dorms upside. Upstairs, and then we go through into the main room. Every weekend, David goes up into the barrios. Um, not, not so well off area, but poor area. Uh, um, and he goes up there and he teaches the kids Muay Thai for free on a Sunday, all out of his own pocket. You know, and he, and he does that every week, man. It's so, so commendable of him just to give him a bit of structure, something to do. And uh, it's really nice. It's really nice for him to let me to come along and join. Next, you'll see something flying up in the sky. It's about four foot square, it's massive, it's way up in the sky. So it flies past, all the kids are going nuts. Uh, and then they run off. And then they come back with it. I don't know how the hell they got it. <laughs> it was massive as well. Come back deflated. <laughs> I don't know whether there's a piece of string hanging down, but fair play. <laughs> Otra, 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 cuidado ahí, cuidado ahí.
transitions with this 